this is Riding With Re. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new here. We're doing something a little bit different today. We are here in sunny Newmarket, home of racing. And the reason goes back to 2021. Cast your mind back to 2021, if you were here then, I did a video about the kind of horse that I was looking for for my first horse, and I mentioned that I wasn't sure that TBs as a breed or X races as a kind of um, characteristic were my type of horse. Even though I had that point of view, I didn't actually have a huge knowledge of racing. So during lockdown, when we were all stuck in our houses, I set about changing that. I did several interviews on Zoom, one with the retraining of racehorses organization, one with Rosie Margustin, who you might know better as Life of Bean on TikTok and Instagram, and one with Kanan Francis, an upcoming jockey who had just come out of racing school. I told myself at the time that once lockdown was finished, I would find Kanan and do a kind of where are they now story. Well, two years later in 2023, I'm here on the yard where Kanan is currently riding to hear what he's doing next. He's just about to get his amateur license and a lot has happened since he came out of racing school. So today we're spending the day with him on his yard with his yard manager and his fellow riders to hear just what it's like to be a jockey for a day. Let's get straight into it. It is 6.30 a.m. and across Newmarket, this home of racing, aspiring jockeys and riders are preparing their first horses of the day, ready to take them up on the heath for the morning's exercise. Kanan is here with his first horse, Confederation, a bright little grey who is owned by a syndicate and for whom this yard has high hopes. Whilst Kanan gets him ready, I want to play you a moment from our interview where he tells me how he discovered his talent for racing. First time I sat on a horse, I was completely clueless. I didn't know what I was doing. So uh, Freedom, who runs Urban Equestrian Academy, he looked at me and he was there, like, you've got a natural kind of ability to ride horses. So he was like, looking to the racing school because he's seen that I like my motorbikes and I was, I was doing like motorbike mechanics. I loved the speed and I loved the adrenaline. And he was like, yeah, look into the racing school because I think it'd be something that you would enjoy. And I went and looked at it and yeah, I just thought, you know what, I'm going to take this chance. I just grew more and more of a passion for horses. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you might have noticed that Kanan was wearing something on his chest there. I know how much you love GoPro footage, and who would I be if I didn't come to Newmarket and not give you a taste of what it would actually be like to be sat behind a racehorse? Not only does this give you an amazing insight into life on the gallops, but there's also some really lovely conversation between Kanan and Adam, between Kanan and Confederation, the horse, and I just love it. So let's switch to that view now. Good boy. You're on camera today, Confed. You're famous. Okay. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. You used to be sick before you got No way. It was that bad? I, I just used to, um, like, the night before. Yeah. Like, oh, what's going to happen? I just wouldn't sleep like. Yeah, I used to get like that, like, bad. Like, I wouldn't sleep because I was thinking so much about it. And like, I didn't want to mess it up. Because I know it's so important for, like, it's so important for them to, like, when they're doing their work. And I just didn't want to go and mess anything up or do anything wrong. So we've come down to the gallops, the guys are just warming up and heading down here and the owner has let me know that Saturday is fast work day so there is a lot of people down here this morning which is super exciting and actually just while we've been waiting for Kanan and his riding partner to get down here we saw Pat Cosgrave come past and Hayley Turner so that was pretty exciting. Now we've just got to wait for the guys to arrive. Okay, chill out. I know you can see them. I know, I know, I know. Chill, chill. Yeah, just relax. Come on. It's okay. Yeah. Good boy. Relaxing. Okay. Back away. Good boy. 
Just chill, just chill. Warming up, they're warming up. Good boy. They're warming up. Warming up. So this section of track is called the Alba Hatchery and we're just waiting for the guys to breeze down here. There's a couple of things I want to tell you about this section. The first is that the owner tells me that this is where horses are really tested. So if they can handle it down here where the ground is so undulating, then they tend to do pretty well. The other thing about this section of track is that it comes with a little story. So there's a little legend that Frankel was once running up this track alongside the train and just breezing along at a canter and he ended up overtaking the train. And so that's where you see them coming up. They're expecting them to come up this section of track and all the way along. And as you can see, it's a little bit hilly. So whether or not they'll be able to manage it, we'll see. So here they are coming up that section of track and I'm going to show you it from this view and then I'm going to show you it from onboard Confederation with Canaan. Yeah, okay. You head down. Hey, 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 it's okay, it's okay, we're finished, we're done the work, we're done the work, look, even Adam's giving you strength today, oh boy, relaxing really well. <laughs> Once they were back at the yard, Kanan and Adam untacked the horses, washed them off and brought them out for a roll, a graze and a groom. This is where I really started to get a glimpse into the relationship between the jockeys, the horses and the trainers. The day before, I'd met Kanan for a coffee to catch up and he told me that of all of the yards he'd worked on, he really found the most benefit in working on a small one like this. Let's hear it directly from him. So when we were chatting yesterday, you were telling me about how you much prefer being on a smaller yard and how the benefit, like there's more benefits to being on a smaller yard. So talk, talk to me a little bit about that. Me being on the, the bigger yards, I've, uh, I've noticed that there's not much opportunity and you've not actually, like most of the time, you're not really looked into. And as I was coming out of the racing school, I really wanted to pursue my career as a jockey. I've learned from going to small yards that you're more set as a team mm. and you've got a lot more opportunity because the trainer looks at you a bit better and you've got more of a connection with your trainer and the horses. So by this point in the morning, I'm having such a wonderful time that I have forgotten exactly what time it is, but the sun is up, I'd say it's between 8.30 and 9, and Kanan and Adam are getting ready their next set of horses. So the horse that you can see here is expressionless, and Adam will be riding Silver Sword. Let's go and meet them on the heath. Yeah, really happy with them. He's moving beautifully. 
I just brush on loss. No rock in a hard place Do I work hard or live at my pace? You're only young once Yeah, that's all great But I also want a future where I'm okay Good boy, specialist Good boy He's come on loaded, right? He's bouncing on the shoes I want him to go with my horses <laughs> So again, once they'd returned home, the first thing that they did was to take the tack off the horses, give them a wash off, and then give them a groom. Whilst we do that, I had an important question for Kanan. If you could go back in time and talk to the Kanan that had just left racing school, like what advice would you give him? I'd definitely tell him, do not be so eager as I was. Oh really? Yeah, because I... What, what do you mean? I was really eager to get my licence, so okay. I was thinking like, I moved around a, a, a lot of yards because I didn't feel like I was getting the opportunity mm. and because I felt like I didn't get the opportunity instead of staying and kind of getting the more experience and stuff like that I kind of left and kind of moved around just to try and find the opportunity that I could get so I could get my license so yeah definitely I'll tell him to calm down a bit <laughs> and uh, yeah just take take time with it and just take everything in and learn everything because even now I'm still learning so much in this game and yeah. there's still so much that I've not learned yeah. so. So as Kanan was answering that question here, you can see him riding on his final ride of the day. This is Mr. Fires, who was so fast coming up that hill that I could not even keep up with him with my camera. This was a really amazing moment. Um, the hill was completely empty and Kanan came from the bottom by himself. He wasn't in a pair, which is what you'd usually see and just breezed up. And there was a moment on the corner where you could see him put Mr. Fires into like fifth gear. Um, and it was incredible to watch, I'll be honest. One thing that I've been very uh, conscious of in looking at the racing world more closely is a lot of conversation around welfare and potentially even cruelty in the sport. I definitely felt today having spoken with Dylan that he really really cares about the horses that he has and I'd love to hear your perspective. Obviously before racing school you were also brand new to equestrianism really yeah. so I'd love to hear your perspective on it as well as an outsider to racing coming in for the first time. When I come into it and I've had so much passion for the horses and so much love for the horses and so much care it was nice to see that there's actually so much of the people that literally blood, sweat and tears that go into these horses and all the like the things that we do, they don't see in the background and they're literally they become their children mm. so it's like like with confederation he's literally like my child now and like silver when i first came here i just like gained a really good bond with them yeah. and it's helped me to kind of gain my, like, a bit more confidence in myself and it's i feel like i'm not just riding horses i'm actually building a connection yeah. and i'm progressing with them as much as they're progressing in, in their careers as well. Well, we are coming to the end of our time in Newmarket, our morning with Kanan Francis, an up-and-coming jockey. But there was a lovely moment from our interview which was completely spontaneous and I really want you to hear it because I think it's such a wonderful way to end. So, last question. What is the one thing that you would want someone to know about racing? Anyone who's not familiar? Uh, I, uh, one thing, and uh, I, that's, this is a good one. So not everyone, so I never knew, me personally, and I don't think a lot of people do know, 
that racing is actually a sport that anyone can get into. Like absolutely anyone, no matter what background, no matter where you're from, no matter what colour, no matter who you are, anyone can get into the racing. Even adults that think that, oh, it's too late. Like if you want to get into racing and still ride a race horse, you can go and do it because the racing schools still do courses for people to come back into racing. And like even like adults that have never been in racing, they'll do like courses for them to come into it as well. And even like things like the Riding the Dream Academy, like, it's really good to just see them bringing the kids in from inner cities and stuff like that because I, I had no clue. Like literally no clue until I volunteered at a stable. I never even knew about jockeys or anything like that. And I just, I think, yeah, a lot of people just need to know that it's a sport for everyone and anyone can join and anyone can get there. It just depends on how much hard work and dedication you're willing to put in. Everything that I've learned is literally from brand new. Like I've literally been like a new brand new baby kind of coming into it. And also bring that back to my family and friends as well yeah. because they've never experienced it. And then when they see it, they're like, oh my God, you're doing this. Like, you know what I mean? And yeah, just to see my mum so proud. My mum's so proud of me for doing it and she's just so happy that I'm actually doing it. So I can't wait for her to see me in my first race. Yeah, 100%. That would be such an amazing moment. If that happens, I'm, well not if, when that happens, I'm definitely going to come and watch. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having us. I've had the best day. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.